All right, so in the previous video, we covered just a little bit of some of the very basics about Photoshop. Uh, what I'm going to talk about in this one is where Photoshop really shines, which is in layers. Okay, so uh, think of your Photoshop layers as clear pieces of plastic that you can put information on, okay, that can exist uh, separate from each other. So uh, there's multiple ways to make a new layer. Your layer palette is going to be here on the right hand side by default. If you remember, if you go to Window, um, there we go. Window, uh, Workspace, click on your essentials. If you have any problems, you can reset it. Uh, your layers are over here. All right, now, right now, when you open up a new document, it starts with the default of one layer. Uh, unless you change your settings, it'll have a, it'll say background and it'll have a lock on it. Uh, that means that um, the background is there in place and you can't move it around. Okay. Now, I have changed my settings. So if I grab my move tool, V, um, it's the very first tool on the left hand side. If I click and drag, okay, it will automatically unlock the layer for me and I'll move my information around. Okay. Now you'll notice the background color is white, so when I move it, you see this checkerboard pattern. This means that that's transparent. Okay. So if I make a new layer, and I'm going to click the new layer button, okay, which I did twice apparently, and I'm going to grab a brush, and I'm going to make some marks here, okay, that beautiful, beautiful painting. Okay. Uh, once I've done that, you see that on this new layer, layer one, and the eyeball turns this on and off. Okay. It exists separate. If I click and drag and pull it beneath this layer, and I'm going to grab my move tool, you see how I can pull this around? Okay. So this is now behind. So you can make multiple layers, you can pull them on top of each other. This is what we call the layer stack. Okay. Um, you can also, by holding down command or control and using the bracket keys, you can move uh, your information up and down in your stack. Okay. So let me go ahead, and here's, here's another thing I want to show you too, it's the history. Uh, history is a beautiful thing. Uh, top right here, if you don't see it, it's underneath the window. Okay, history, if I click on that, it'll pop out. So you see right here, Photoshop records everything that I've done. Okay, so I can step back in my history. Uh, if I mess something up, uh, let's say I want to step back to here. Okay, now the important thing to know is that as soon as I do another uh, action, it rewrites from that point forward, so you lose everything. All right, so just be careful with that. Uh, and if you go all the way back up, you can click up at the top. It'll take it all the way back to the very beginning. Okay. Uh, you can change how many states that uh, Photoshop saves of your history. Okay, that's in your preferences. I'll get into it in another video. Okay. Um, if you have a really good computer, I would recommend, oh, I think 100 steps is usually 150 if you really want to push it. Um, you start getting beyond that, it becomes a massive memory drain. Okay, so back to layers. Here on the right hand side, your layer palette may look slightly different. You might have a different thumbnail. Okay. The way you change that, I like to have the biggest thumbnail possible. I'm working on a very high resolution screen. So your parallel lines right up here in the corner, if you click on that, this is also how you can make a new layer, duplicate a layer, and do a bunch of other stuff. But down at the bottom, you have your panel options. I'm going to click on that, and you'll notice you can have no thumbnail, small, medium, or large, okay? I stick to large and I keep it the entire document. Hit OK. Okay. All right, so you can make a new layer by clicking on the new layer button. You can also make a new layer by clicking on uh, the parallel lines here. And you'll notice when you do that, that is uh, Command Shift N, okay? Or Control Shift N will make a new layer. You can also go to Layer, New, Layer, okay? I will say, uh, as we go throughout the course, I use keyboard shortcuts a ton because if I have to go up to my menus every time, if you've ever watched Grandma surf the internet, it kind of has that same feeling, right? Where it's like, Grandma, <laughs> it's so slow. Um, I worked in a production environment, so I tend to want to move very quickly, okay? So Command-Shift-N, and it'll bring up a new layer dialog box. Now, the nice thing about this is that it allows you to name the layer right here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put a square. Oops, I have my caps lock on. 
Okay. Um, the color right here, what's nice about Photoshop is as you begin to build your documents, right? Um, if you only have four or five layers, it's not a big deal. It's um, not a big deal to name your layers. It'll do layer one, layer two, layer three. But as you get into more complex projects, you're going to get more and more layers, right? So um, I've worked on projects that have had over 90 layers, over 100 layers. If you don't name your layers, you're in for a world of pain, okay? Photoshop also allows you, and you'll notice here, like I'm going to click on red, hit OK. And you see on the left-hand side here, sorry, on the left-hand side of the layer right here, it changes the color. So if you are making a document and you don't want to necessarily group your layers, but you want them to belong to a certain color, okay, you can organize them that way too. Okay. Now, you, if you make a new layer here, you notice it pops, it says layer one. Okay. You can either right-click on it okay, to, to change the name. Okay. You can also change the color here, right? so I can make this yellow. Um, you can also, if you click on the name slowly twice, right? Let's call this circle, because I'm going to make a square and a circle. Okay. Now, what I don't want to do, here's the thing in Photoshop, right? Photoshop does what you tell it to, and that's a good thing and that's a bad thing, because sometimes you do things that aren't intended. Okay. If I double-click quickly on, quickly on the layer, it's going to bring up my layer style. We're not getting into that yet. Okay. So I'm going to make sure I double-click on the name if I want to rename it. Okay. Or again, right-click and rename it. So let's start with the square one. Um, again, think of this now, this layer, and you notice on the right-hand side here, you see how um, you might not be able to see, but when you do it on your own, it has a checkerboard pattern. Okay, that means there's nothing on the layer, it's completely transparent. Okay, my background is white, right? I can change the color of my background, let me do that first. So, there are multiple ways to do this. Uh, G is your paint bucket tool, okay, but you want to make sure you're on your paint bucket tool, not on your gradient tool, not on your 3D material drop tool, okay? And let's just do like a dark red, and if I click, it fills. Okay. I can also do Shift Delete, okay, which will bring up my fill, okay. and I can do my foreground or my background, okay, or some other fills. Okay. Um, so I'm just gonna make it a dark color. All right. So I'm gonna come to my square. Now you'll notice I know that this layer is selected because it's highlighted. You see how it's lighter gray. Okay, if I click on my circle layer, now I'm on my circle layer. A lot of your problems in Photoshop come because you're not on the right layer. So you want to make sure you're on the correct layer. Double check, look on your right hand side. Okay, because what I don't want to do is come into my background. I want to be able to move this square around. Okay, I'm going to use my rectangular marquee tool. It's the second option down. Okay, I'm going to click and drag. If you hold down shift, it'll make a perfect square. Okay, and let go. And now I've made a bounding box where I can only edit inside of the selection, right? So selections tell Photoshop only change things inside of this space. So I'm going to grab a brush. I'm going to pick some obnoxious color. And you'll notice if I try and paint outside, I'm clicking and dragging, it does nothing, okay? But now if I go inside, okay, it will paint inside of that layer. Now here's the issue I was saying earlier. You notice I'm on my background layer. Okay, so when I deselect, if I want to move this around, I can't, okay, because it is now part of my background. It's not separate, okay, so if I do that, I'm just going to step back in, okay, to my history, go back up to my rectangular marquee. I'm going to click and highlight, make sure I'm on square, and now I'm going to take my brush and paint. and make this sort of eye bleeding color, okay? Now, once I have made a selection, once I've, I'm finished with it, I can deselect by either using a selection tool like the marquee tool and clicking outside of the selection, and now it's deselected, okay? Or I can hit Command or Control D, that deselects. Or if you want, you can go up to Select, Deselect Layers, okay? Um, that's the really slow, awful way to do it, but you could. Uh, I'm gonna grab my Move tool, now, with your Move tool, anytime you use a tool, your options will be up at the top. You see right here it says Auto Select Layer. Okay, That means whatever I click, I'm going to grab. So if I grab this, okay, I can move it around. But you see how it's transparent here? I can see the background. 
if I grab there, you see how it's trying to have me make a selection? Okay. Uh, that's because I'm trying to grab the background and I can't because it's locked. Okay. So it's sometimes helpful. Um, it's nice when, here, let me do this. I'm going to grab the circle, so I'm going to make a, a elliptical marquee. Okay, I'm going to pull that out. I'm just going to fill it with like a violet. Oops. I'm going to choose foreground color. And I'm going to deselect, Command or Control D. And if I grab my Move tool, now I can move my circle. And if I click inside of my square, I can move my square. Okay, makes life easy that way. Um, once you start getting multiple layers and you're trying to grab something that's behind something else, okay, so here, let me drag this in the layer stack, okay, and let's say I want to move this circle back here now. Now you'd have to be very, very careful about how I grab, because if I grab here, I'm going to grab my, my square instead, okay. So sometimes it's easier to turn off auto select up here and then just make sure I'm on the layer that I want and then I can click and drag anywhere and I'll move. Okay, so if I click on square, I don't even have to click on the square. I can click out here, and I can click and drag and move it around. Okay. All right. Now, once again, in your layer stack, you're saying what is on top of what. Okay. So I can click and drag things behind. Okay. The other way I can do it is if I'm on that layer, I can hit Command and use my left and right brackets, and it will move it up and down in the layer stack. Okay. Um, that's helpful. It's not really helpful with two layers because it's just as easy to click and drag. It's really helpful when you have 90 layers and you want to move something back about 10 or 12. Um, makes life a whole lot easier. Okay. Click and drag these out. Okay. Hold my circle, click and drag it out. Okay, so um, here is what I want you to do for your very first assignment. Um, I want you using the marquee tools, uh, your brushes, okay, your paint, um, give me a document that has, give me at least four layers, okay, so I'm going to make a couple more layers, I'm going to make a star, and I'll make something else, it doesn't really matter what it is, okay, I want you to use uh, your paint, your brush tool, B is your, is your uh, brush tool, okay, make sure you're on your brush, now remember all of your options are up at the top, Right, so if I click on this little drop down here, this is going to tell me what I'm doing. Okay, I have a lot more brushes than you have installed. Okay, you can we'll get into that much later about installing brushes. Just do you can do like a hard round, okay, pick a color, okay, and I'm going to paint. Here we go. Forgot I named this star, so I'm gonna make it myself a beautiful star here. Okay. okay. So what I want to see is four separate layers. I want you to play with the brush tool, the fill tool, uh, make selections. Okay. And I want to see. I want you to submit the document. Okay. As a .psd at 300 ppi. Okay. And. Uh, Minimum of four layers, make it a letter size that's perfectly fine, eight and a half by 11. And I want to see different things in all four layers. You can do whatever you want. Like, um, I am this first week, I'm being a little, a little lenient on, because I, I just want you to play around a little bit with it. If you want to spend a couple hours and make something really kind of fun and interesting, by all means. Okay, I'm just encouraging you to explore. But the requirement is uh, four layers, each with different things on them. Okay, name your layers, and I want you to go ahead and use the brush tool, the fill tool, and uh, the marquee tools. So that would be your rectangular and your elliptical. So I want to see evidence of all of that. Okay, um, the next video I'm going to get a little bit more into selections, and but we're going to go ahead and end here so we can keep it at a, a reasonable length.